good morning my dear students we are discussing about uh, the benefit of biological material for the human welfare in the past few days now in this how the plants could be used for the human welfare that's what we are concentrating now if we have to improve the quality of the plants to give more produce better produce that is one aspect we can improve the quality we can improve the quantity also but at the same time you have to understand that if a plant is attacked by many diseases then that will also result in the loss of the crop it is not enough if you just increase the quantity and the quality of the crops but on the negative side the diseases are also attacking the plants and then the the crop is not able to produce the desired amount of quality and quantity so one thing that we have to understand in biology is if you can prevent the plant diseases then you can very well improve the quantity of the crops or the benefit that we are derived from the crops it is a very very common sight if you go to a market and then if you if you bring some fruits to your home you will see that many fruits they have become damaged and it is not fit for consumption we are not able to eat because already the diseases have come and it has resulted in the loss of the food value to the crop so if you are able to prevent the plant diseases that itself is a measure for improving the quality of the crops so uh, how what are all the plant diseases common diseases and how we can improve the quality of the crop we are going to study now now if you see <clears throat> there are thousand and one diseases occurring to the plants just like uh, in the case of the human being so many diseases are at attacking in the common plants crop plants vegetable crops now nothing is spared in this category all the plants in one way or another they are attacked by the pathogens now in this pathogen list viruses bacteria fungi these three organisms play a very important role now these microorganisms they attack the host plants and then they cause the diseases now as i told you there are so many diseases in the uh, uh, by which the plants are getting attacked it is a totally out of area now to discuss all the diseases of the plants because uh, in, even in agriculture there is a separate area called pathology only in pathology they will be studying about the different diseases which are attacking the different crops at your level some few very few diseases say about four or five diseases that are normally attacking the povese members particularly the rice or wheat because they become the agricultural crop for our daily use so what are the different diseases attacked attacking the crops we will discuss but before that we we must have a general idea about what is what a disease is and how it is a causing a disease some idea about all these things now just like in the case of the human being a, an organism which is a causing a disease is a called as a pathogen it is a called as a pathogen it comes from the basic word called patho patho means disease gen means causative causing so pathogen means that which is a causing the disease that is the meaning of the word pathogen okay so it comes from the word patho patho means a disease in many hospitals you have got a separate department called the pathology department of pathology okay now 
when a pathogen is attacking a particular organism that is called as a host now this pathogen could be a virus it could be a bacteria <coughs> it could be a bacteria and or it could be even fungi sometimes other organisms are also there micro there are many diseases which are caused by mycoplasma what is called as a pplo pleuronemonia like organisms pplo it's called a mycoplasma so plas mycoplasmoids are also there viroids are there viroids those which look like viruses but not a true virus is called as a viroids very few algae are also sometimes causing the disease very few algae there is a alga called cephalurus 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 it is causing a disease in the coffee plant this is being very often asked in the examination because no alga is causing any disease only one alga cephalurus is causing a disease just like a fungus it is a causing a disease in the coffee plant but generally fungi will be causing they are responsible for causing all the diseases and that too in fungi there is a group called deuteromycetes deuteromycetes these deuteromycetes are what is called as a fungi imperfecta this is responsible for causing most of the diseases of course even though sometimes it is caused by the other group of organisms namely myxomycetes phycomycetes ascomycetes basidiomycetes in this group also there are certain fungi which are causing the disease but deuteromycetes group is the group which is responsible for maximum number of the diseases which are caused by the plants of course bacteria also form a um, substantial amount of it, it is contributing for the diseases in the plants to a maximum extent so a pathogen is one which is a causing a disease it could be a virus it could be a bacteria or it could be a fungi generally even though other group of organisms are also responsible coming to the host who, who could be a host anybody could be a host plants are the host these are attacking the plants these are attacking the animals these are attacking the human being so even the, there is a relationship between the bacteria and the human being bacteria and animal virus and the human being like that the, the the pathogen and host relationship is there but in our class today's class in a botany class we are going to talk only about the relationship of uh, virus bacteria and fungi to the plants so what relationship what a pathogenic relationship it is having we are going to discuss <coughs> now when a pathogen has to cause a disease when a pathogen has to cause a disease first thing number 1 there should be what is called as a compatibility 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 what is this a compatibility <clears throat> a particular pathogen should find a particular host any pathogen cannot attack any host that's it's not at all possible see for example there may be a plant in your house it may be having a disease called cities or some disease it is being attacked so this is a being the, the plant a is now being attacked by a disease a plant a is attacked by disease a and very near by area a human is a living now this a will not be able to cause any disease in the human or this a will not be able to cause any disease in the animals animals why this a pathogen cannot cause any disease even in other plants other plants that's not at all possible 
a pathogen A can cause a disease only in a plant A. Only in plant A. So, this host pathogen specificity should be there. Otherwise, they cannot cause a disease. Even this specificity is to a specific level and even variety level. Variety level. A particular pathogen is attacking a particular variety of a plant means it cannot attack the other variety of even the same species. Only that particular variety is being attacked by this particular pathogen. So, this pathogen host specificity or compatibility should be there. That's a very important point. Specific. Specificity. So, what is this specificity? In other words, it is a compatibility. Each and every pathogen should find a suitable host. Otherwise, because the the, the surroundings, for example, you we 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 the human being get a, a few ascaris lumbrigoids in our stomach. See, these ascaris lumbrigoides cannot live in any other organism. It should find a suitable host. So, the first thing is the pathogen should find a suitable host for its survival. Okay. So, that is what is called as host pathogen specificity. Then, second one is they must find an entry. A pathogen should find an entry into the host to cause a disease. Some of the diseases are on the epidermal area. It can, it need not enter into the system. It can cause a disease by uh, attaching itself to the surface area. But many diseases, many diseases in this world, they are caused only by the entry of a pathogen into a host. So, the second problem for a pathogen is, first problem is it should find a specific host. Second one is it should be able to get a entry into that. So, in a human being, how the entry of a pathogen is a taking place? It is a taking place. It is a, our body has got so many openings. Many openings are there. They say only nine openings are there. Some people say ten openings. It all depends upon how you are calculating. But you see, there are thousand and one um, pores, uh, sweat pores are there. <coughs> And then hair follicles are there. So, it is through this also sometimes uh, the pathogens will enter. It need not be always through the mouth or the nose or through the anus. It could be through any small opening which is present inside the body. So, they will enter through the holes, pores which are present in our body. Similarly, in a plant, you have got what is known as Stomata, or got what is known as stomata. It is through these stomata the pathogens or the spores will enter and then it will go and colonize and then it will be able to produce a disease. So they find the entry through the pores present in the stomata. Okay, then the this is the as I told you, first one is post pathogen specificity i told specificity both of them should be specific then number 2 it should find a suitable pathogen that is a entry is there then third one it should be able to colonize colonization. It should be able to colonize. Colonization is very important. Once this uh, colonization is uh, taking place, the host starts showing what is known as symptoms. It symptoms. Now, these uh, symptoms which are shown by a plant animal or a human being is good because only by seeing the symptoms you are able to understand that a particular plant has got a disease or an animal has got a disease or you have got a disease. 
so whenever you are getting a disease most of the diseases it is they are within our body and they they are able to show themselves only with the help of the symptoms many a times what happens we people we confuse the symptoms with the diseases we confuse the symptoms with the diseases please remember the symptoms are different and diseases are different each and every disease will have a symptom sometimes what happens many diseases will have the same symptom or many symptoms will be there for a common particular disease also there is that is the problem that is why we are confusing the symptoms and diseases always for example they will say i am i am suffering from headache many people will be complaining and they say that a headache is a disease they categorize headache is a disease but remember please that headache is not at all a disease it is only a symptom <coughs> see if you have got some problem in your eyes if you are put, putting so much of a strain on your eyes then you will be getting the headache but actually it has got nothing to do with the eyes you are having the problem only the fundus problem you are having you are having some visual problem so you are developing the headache so when you are developing the headache that means it is only a symptom okay so similarly <clears throat> for similar diseases will produce the same symptom you should be able to differentiate between what is a symptom and what is a disease so there is a lot of difference between the symptoms and the diseases so when the uh, microorganisms are entering into a plant material and they colonize they produce the symptoms now it is at this stage the farmers have to be aware that their plants have got the attack and then they have to take some precautionary measure they have to take some precautionary measure then they have to apply certain uh, fungicides or pesticides or insecticides or something like that what is uh, specific for that particular disease they have to act if they do not take care of their symptoms then the diseases it becomes uh, mature and then it results in the damage of the crop that is the last stage in the disease development is the damage to the crop if you don't attend to the crops you know, particularly uh, in a regular stay way then that will result in the damage to the particular crop so if you want to have a crop which is uh, with the maximum benefit and you don't want a particular crop to be attacked by a particular pathogen what can you do see at this stage if you just see this you will be able to understand that very clearly when there is a host pathogen specificity even at this stage you can prevent some diseases how can you prevent these diseases see for example you have got a crop a as i was telling you you have got a crop a in your field and pathogen a is going to attack this crop a and then produce a disease let's imagine so only an example now when a is getting the attack after some time next time you don't cultivate a in this field you cultivate b you change the crop when you change the crop the a pathogen will not be able to attack the b you take the uh, you cultivate the a crop in some other field where you don't have a pathogen a then by this method by changing the crop this is what we call as a crop rotation in agriculture now in a particular field if you have got a particular crop for 6 months you, you cultivate a crop after that you cultivate a b crop don't cultivate the very same crop because the pathogens of a crop will be there in the atmosphere will be there in the water will be there in the soil it will be there everywhere so a pathogen will be always uh, aspiring for a for the a crop to be sowed but if for changing the crop then the a pathogen will not be able to attack the b host 
and then the bee host will be safe in the hands of the farmers. Then after that you can cultivate tea crop. Like that you go on changing the crop. So this is what we call as a crop rotation. Crop rotation is a very good policy, the best policy for avoiding the diseases because a particular pathogen will be able to attack only a particular host. So if you are going on changing the host, a particular pathogen will not be able to see, get the very same host and then by this method you can prevent the occurrence of the diseases to some extent. Then this is a second point, the entry of the pathogen into a host. At this stage also you can prevent certain diseases if you are really careful. You can uh, apply certain um, in, uh, what is uh, called as a fungicides or pesticides. Now if, when a particular crop is uh, getting a disease, <coughs> there are certain pesticides which you can uh, apply for that. But nowadays, a form, I mean, scientists have developed certain, I mean, uh, disease-resistant uh, chemicals, which you can pre-treat. This is called the pre-treatment. You can put the seeds in certain chemicals, and then if you sow the seeds after the chemical treatment, then that will not get the disease. So it is a something like uh, we are we human being are uh, taking certain medicines before we get the disease. Precautionary measures. You can follow these precautionary measures even for the plants. You can soak the seeds in the chemicals which will be preventing the occurrence of the disease. Then once the, it is uh, the uh, pathogens are entering into the plant, of course a colonization will take place and you can't uh, prevent at this stage. So very, it's, it's a too delayed procedure. Then of course this uh, after uh, if, in spite of all these measures that you are taking, in spite of all these precautions that you are taking, if you see that your plant or your crop has been attacked by a particular disease, then what can you do? There is another way. Of course, your plant has already got a disease. So what can you do? You can apply only the different type of pesticides or insecticides, fungicides, etc. Now, so many fungicides and uh, I mean, uh, insecticides have come to the market. I am going to discuss that very elaborately. Now, all these are fungicides, insecticides, they are all very dangerous to the human uh, health. You are, you are applying this to the plant with the aim that the plant should not get the disease. But at the same time, they become injurious to our health. So, what can you do? Now, these uh, fungicides and pesticides have been biologically produced. So, you have got what is on the new concept is bio pesticides, bio insecticides. So, these, these have come to the market. They are not of the chemical origin. So, if you can shift your method of a cultivation by applying what is called as a bio pesticide and a bio insecticide, bio fungicides, then it will be having the equal value. It will be equally killing all the diseases, but at the same time, it will not be that much injurious to the human health. So, that is our latest concept about uh, the fighting the diseases by the plants to the pathogens. Okay. So, these are all the different steps that a plant will undergo when, you, when it is getting a disease. So, if a farmer is very uh, cautious about all these things, very well. Now, only thing is, if a farmer is a very, he is, a, he is an expert in that field, if he knows about his crop very well, nearly 80 percentage of the diseases could be definitely prevented. It is only the, what is known as ignorance of the farmers, which becomes responsible for the diseases in the plants. Many a times uh, when, uh, when there is a water stagnation, they do not bother about it. When there is a water stagnation, automatically the crops will get a decayed and then it will be inviting the diseases. So, when there is a water stagnation, you have to drain the water and then you have to make the crop dry. At the same time, when you have to apply water, you have to do it. When you have to drain the water, you have to do. Seed treatment should be there. You have to go on removing the weeds now and then. Very often you have to remove the weeds. Or if you are not able to remove the weeds, if the number of the weeds are so large in size, 
then you can apply the VD sites. VD sites also nowadays uh, bio VD sites have come to the market instead of the uh, chemical VD sites. So if a farmer is very proficient, very efficient in dealing with his uh, crop, 90 percentage of the diseases uh, could be successfully fought with. No problem about that. So <clears throat> with this uh, very basic idea about uh, what is a pathogen, what is a disease, how a pathogen is uh, causing a disease, how the diseases could be prevented by a farmer to that which is occurring in the plant, we are going to understand a few very common diseases that a plant is getting. So the first disease is the blast disease of rice, the blast disease of rice, <coughs> you know rice or you can even call it as a paddy, no problem. The botanical name for paddy is Oryza sativa, Oryza sativa. See, when you are cultivating a crop on an agricultural basis for a common usage that will be having the uh, species name as a sativa. You have got the species name as sativa in many places, sativa, sativa. Sativa means what? Sativa means an agricultural crop, that's all. The meaning is agricultural crop. Oryza is the name of the paddy from the place from which it came. Now we say that the paddy, paddy has become, Arisi has become, Oryza has become the, I mean, uh, uh, what is known as uh, our basic food for the, uh, for all the Indians, at least for the South Indians. But this Oryza is not our Indian crop that we have to understand. At a particular stage, say about 2000 years back, it has come from some other country. And in that country, the plant is called as Orisi. And it is from this word Orisi, you have got the word Oryza. So, Oryza sativa is the botanical name for paddy. It is being attacked by a pathogen called Pyricularia Oryzae. I have already told you, when they are giving a nomenclature, when they are giving a name, for a pathogen, it could be a bacterium, it could be a fungus, it could be anything. So, when a pathogen is given a name, which host it is attacking, the host name is added as the species name of the pathogen. You should understand the genus name of the host, the genus name of the host is given as a specific name of the pathogen. Now, this is a beautiful system because when you are telling, when you, when you see the word, now you see, you are seeing a word Paricularia Varizae. Now, you can understand that it is attacking the Varizae plant. Okay, so the species name of the pathogen will be the genus name of the host. So, this is the nomenclature rule that they are following. So, Varizae sativa is being attacked by Paricularia Varizae. Now, if I am telling all these things, you will never forget certain things because already you the students, you are already packed with uh, jargons. So many technology, many terms are the zoological names, say Periplanet, American, Ascaris, Lumbrigades, Hibiscus, Rosa, Sinensis. So every time when we are telling the botanical and the zoological names, you get much worried how to remember all these things. But it has got some meaning. Then if you understand the meaning, if you understand the nomenclature, if you got the understanding nomenclature principle, how they are giving the name, then it becomes very easy for you. Only thing is, you have to learn few Latin words and Greek words, that's all. Then, the remembering the name becomes absolutely easy. So, Pyricularia Oryza is the pathogen name, Oryza sativa is the host name, Pyricularia Oryza is belonging to the Deuteromycetes group. Mycetes means fungus, you must be knowing, okay, fine. <coughs> So, what are the symptoms of this disease? It is found on the leaf blades, sheaths, rakis, and it is having isolated bluish green fusiform necrotic lesions. So, what is a fusiform? See, this shape you call as fusiform in Latin. Now, in zoology, your teacher would have told you fusiform muscles, fusiform. Many, many a place. In the shape of the root also you have got a nappy form, fusy form, <coughs> conical type of a root you have studied in the root modification topic. So fusy form refers to a shape. So this shape is called as a fusy form. So the lesions will be in the shape of a fusy form. 
and it is necrotic they are using a word necrotic what is a necrotic necrotic means a death necro means a death so this fusiform areas will be having dead areas and how this death is taking place it is by the lesions so what is the symptom it is found on the leaf blades sheath rachis and this will be bluish green fusiform necrotic lesions with a water soaked appearance that's very important the symptoms and all you have to under i mean thoroughly uh, memorize because they will be giving the different symptoms of the different pathogens and then they will be asking you to select the correct answer what is the symptom of the pyricular area or i say or what is the symptoms of the blast disease they will be asking so only a very slight difference will be there between one symptom and another symptom because the symptoms will be mostly i mean uh, common for many diseases okay as i told you if you have got uh, if you are overeating you will be getting headache if you have got eye problem you will be getting headache even in a brain tumor you will be getting a headache so so the symptoms will be common for many diseases okay so symptoms you should be able to understand very clearly if you want to find out what type of a disease it is it leads to drying of leaves and seedling after transplantation this is spindle shaped necrotic lesions spindle shape means this is also called a spindle shape or fusiform this is spindle shaped necrotic lesions on both leaf lamina and sheath with a gray center and brown yellowish lesions around it so these are the symptoms for the <coughs> blast disease now you see a beautiful photography of uh, how the disease is attacking the paddy crop this, uh, this is the leaves of the paddy see they are brownish in color beautiful system so this is a spindle shape are you able to see this is it see the fusiform shape or spindle shape uh, seen very beautifully in some of the in some places this is also seen very clearly so they are spindle shape and then in the center you are able to see the place where the disease or where the pathogen is very much now this is uh, the pathogen pyricularia oryzae and the nature of morphological nature is also of this uh, pyricularia oryzae it is uh, having a septate conidia these are all called the conidias <coughs> Conidia is a reproducing organ of the pathogen Deuteromycetes pyricularia. So it is with the help of the conidia, it is able to reproduce. In a conidia, you have got a septate conidia, non-septate conidia, etc. So this is a septate conidia. Okay. Now, <coughs> what will be the nature of the pyricularia oryza that we are going to see now? <coughs> now, the pathogen possesses a hyaline septate mycelium when young and changes to olive brown during maturity see first <coughs> it it is a it is a septate mycelium I, I told you what is a septate mycelium this is a septate mycelium see this is a septate mycelium mycelium will be having the septa <coughs> it is a septate mycelium when young and changes to brown during the maturity terminal conidia with ob pyriform this shape is called ob pyriform ob pyriform septate conidium with a small basal advantage <coughs> then control measure see the control measure will be mostly general to most of the plants i would have given the control measure as a yeah, uh, general one but a specific uh, control measure is also there for certain plants most economic method is the cultivation of the disease resistant varieties high yielding varieties these two are the controlling measures then as i was telling you sometimes you can give the seed treatment the so immersion of the seeds in 2 percentage solution of calumet b for 24 hours then agrasan also then sarazen and spergon the these are the chemicals in which two percentage of the solution is taken you mix everything and then you soak the seeds and then you sow the seeds when the seed treatment is given in this way then perhaps you can reduce the incidence of the diseases because the seed itself will develop the resistance for the diseases then 
<coughs> of course, with all these uh, things, uh, sometimes uh, the plants will get the diseases. Then what can you do? You can follow certain sanitation method. What is a sanitation method? Debris of rice and digitaria marginata should be collected and destroyed. You have to keep the, the surroundings very clean because you have to collect the debris and then best thing is uh, burn it. That is the best thing to avoid the diseases because even when you are giving any type of a treatment, the spores which are present there will be viable, it will be in the soil, again and again they will be germinating, recurrence of diseases will be there. So the best method to kill a disease is to take the pathogen and burn it. That is the best method. Okay. So the spraying and the dusting will be other one. Blast disease is a controlled by spraying Bordax mixture, that is, which is a beautiful fungicide. Compared of uh, copper sulfate 9 kg, quick lime 9 kg, and they have to be mixed in water of uh, 250 liters. So you have to follow the method very, I mean, uh, very carefully. See. What is the problem with the most of the Indian farmers, I tell you, they are, they are over anxious about the crops. Just like uh, our Indian mothers are over I mean, cautious about their children, the same way. If the specification given is copper sulphate 9 kg and quick lime 9 kg, that will be able to control the disease. What the farmers, if the scientists are telling that they have to follow this method, they will simply put a more amount of, uh, I mean, fungicides because they are under the impression that when you are adding more chemicals, more fungicides and uh, more bodax mixture and all, it will be able to control the disease more efficiently. That is uh, their concept. Uneducated farmers, they have got that wrong concept. Now, what is the result? These uh, fungicides and these insecticides and they are all when it is left unused by the plant, it goes into the system of the plant. It goes into the system of the plant. And then as a result of that, we are getting those chemicals into our body, into our system. So that is a problem. So the limited as it is advised by the scientist, agriculturalist, it, they have to follow the method. Otherwise, they will be damaging the crops as well as they will be damaging our health also. So, these specifications they have to follow very clearly. Blast is controlled by dusting of organomercuric compounds also. This is another method of controlling the blast disease. Okay, the discussion about one disease is over. Then we are taking up the discussion about the tick or disease of the groundnut. Groundnut is a very common crop in our South India as well as in North India also, but mostly it is uh, specific to our South India. Some some varieties they are very specific to South India. And in this uh, disease, you have got a tikka disease, a common one. What is the meaning of the word tikka? Tikka means vermilion. Ladies used to wear on their forehead pottu. We say pottu. This is it not. So this uh, tikka is in the shape of a this is what is called a tikka in Hindi. The pottu is called as a tikka. In Hindi, it is called as a tikka. So, it is a Hindi word actually. So, tikka disease of the groundnut. The disease or the symptom will be in the shape of a tikka. That is why it is called a tikka disease. So, the pathogen is Cercospora personata. <coughs> Host name is Arachis hypogea. Arachis hypogea. I just to tell you uh, to some clue to remember this pathogen is person a circospora personata. Now in Latin personata person means a human face, human face. Okay. So the pathogen spore it looks like a human face with eyes, nose, mouth, and all. So they have given the specific name as a personata. Hypo, what is hypo? Hypogea. Hypo means below. Gia means ground. Hypo means below. Gia means ground. Groundnut is growing below the soil level. So, the species name Hypogea they have given. So, 
the groundnut is called as arachis hypogea and the disease causing agent is called as a cercospora <coughs> fine for the symptom it produces rounded lesions of 1 to 6 mm dia appear on the leaves when plants are at least 2 months old these spots are dark brown or black and found on both the surfaces of course now in the next slide you will be able to see the uh, diagram very photography very beautiful photography see how the this is the leaf of your groundnut how it is being attracted by the I mean, uh, this leaf is the uh, best example. See how much of a disease is there in this leaf. So it is in the shape of a tick. So this is the tick. It is in the shape of a, I mean, the vermilion that the our Indian women are wearing on their forehead. So that is why it's called tick disease. And sometimes it is attacking the <coughs> blast. This is a, sorry, this is a blast disease of rice. So this is the tikka disease of the groundnut. If you visit the groundnut field, you will never miss this because this disease is such a common disease in our South India that there is no I mean field which is not without this disease. Such a common disease it is. Very often that is uh, uh, even, with, even with all the sanitation condition with all the control measures that the farmer is taking definitely he will be having this disease in the field you can't avoid it fortunately this is not attacking the seeds to that extent only leaf will be attacked but we are concerned only about the seeds in the ground you know so that is not bothering the farmers too much fine the mycelium of a cercospora personata is a slender septate branched and brown Branched hostoria absorb food from the host tissue. See, when the branched hostoria are absorbing the food from the host tissue, the seeds will not be getting sufficient nutrition and the seed size will be reduced. So, when a plant is getting this disease, the seed output will not be there to the desired extent. Each conidiophore produces a single conidium at its tip. Disease is uh, <coughs> spread by conidia throughout the through the wind. So one only one when one plant is getting a disease, it is a spreading by means of wind. So a farmer has to be very very cautious. That is why we often very used to tell the farmers should visit his field every day, every morning. A farmer has to go to the field and then see. What has happened to his crop? Which crop has become diseased? Which crop he has to remove? Then only he can avoid the disease. If a particular plant he sees that it is a diseased means, then itself he has to remove the plant out of that crop, I mean field, and then he has to burn it. If you just leave the you sow the field crop, I mean uh, seeds, and then go somewhere else, and then return to the field after six months, you will see nothing there. Everything would have been completely, totally damaged. See, cultivating the crops, culturing the crops is a just like a bringing the babies in our home. See how much of attention you are showing to your babies. So much of attention you have to give to your plants also, to your crop also. Then only the crop, you can get the best harvest from the crop. So a farmer has to go to the field every day and then see what has happened to his crop. So that, because you see now I am explaining that the disease is spread by the wind. If you just leave it for one week, the whole field will get the disease. You have to be very cautious about that. So, what is the next one? By sanitation and crop rotation, you can prevent the disease. Then, what are, how can you control the disease? Phosphatic and potassium manures will reduce the incidence of the diseases. Sulfur is also effective. Sulfur is also effective. So, sulfur, potassium, <coughs> phosphates, these are all having a negative effect on the diseases. So, you can very successfully use it for controlling the diseases. A third disease which is normally attacking our Indian crop is what is called as a citrus canker. You know citrus is a group of plants. Uh, what it is coming under Hesperidium. What we call as um, bumbly moss or um, 
um, lemon all lemon varieties lemon varieties you, you call is a loose jacket tight jacket a very big variety a small variety kamala is there uh, even in elmiche you got uh, two varieties kodi kodi elmiche mara elmiche you got these are all what is a it's a group of plants this is called a citrus many many species are there even in citrus elmiche itself you got an early 20s varieties are there so okay so this uh, this is citrus plants they are mostly attacked by a bacterium called xanthomonas citri xanthomonas citri i have told you uh, i told you i will give you a clue to remember the names how to remember the name xanthomonas they have given the name what is the meaning of the word xantho xantho means yellow xantho means yellow monas means bacterium in single form if a bacterium is like this called monas then diplo then it will be in the form of a chain so monos means a bacterium existing as a single structure and it will be orange in color so they have given the name of the bacterium as xanthomonas it is attacking the citrus plant so it is called as a xanthomonas a citri now you can very easily if i give the meaning of this word you can very easily remember the name of the pathogen so the pathogen which is attacking the citrus is called as xanthomonas citri so what is the symptoms all green parts namely the leaf a twig thorn and no part of the plant is spared i tell you when the disease comes it attacks the whole plant the complete tree is totally lost and maturing fruits become more and more or less covered with brown scabby spots surrounded by dark brown glossy margins enlarging to 3 to 4 mm dia and becomes a raised and a rough and a turn brown so these are the symptoms of the diseases <coughs> see this is a beautiful uh, photography of the disease how uh, um, you know, um, this this is a, uh, a leaf getting attacked by the disease this is a fruit getting the disease now if you go to the market to purchase the citrus fruits elm chambaram you will never find uh, a, a fruit without this invariably invariably if you are seeing 100 fruits 90 fruits will have the disease like this you can't avoid it it's a, such a common disease in in our country but of course it's not that much injurious to our health so we don't bother but if the disease is too much occupying nearly 20 percentage of the area then better not to purchase that but one or two spots here and there it's okay fine you, because you will never get your fruit without this uh, disease see these are water soaked uh, uh, rings are there and then in the center you will be getting a uh, spot and uh, this is the uh, you will be getting the disease on the tree trunk on the leaf as well as on the fruit everywhere the disease will be there for the lemon <coughs> so sandamonas citri which is a bacillus or uh, gram negative type of bacteria common in india after rains it enters through the stomata and the wounds and multiply in mesophyll or cortex to which they are confined okay fine <clears throat> how to control the disease infection is largely prevented by removing the infected parts and by spraying the plants with a bordex mixture a very common i mean um, <laughs> what is called a, i mean pesticide in our india now there is a lot of controversy over bordex mixture there is a lot of controversy it is being debated at a very higher level international seminars and all how safe this bordex mixture is and the whole world is telling that bordex mixture is a, it's a very highly unsafe to the human health because it is such a dangerous one it is highly unsafe to the but what to do our country is a poor country country like india where the indian farmers will not be able to get a suitable substitute for this that's a problem you can't get an equal i mean insect is a pesticide which is equally potent at a very cheaper rate so our farmers will not be able to purchase a costlier pesticide so this is very cheaper that is why they go for this but at the same time it is a i mean uh, uh, dangerous to the human health but what to do there is no other escape for this okay so spraying with <coughs> streptocycline is another one so a, 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 a solution for this problem i have raised a problem 
that a bodex mixture is injurious to the human health but it is a very effective pesticide so how to solve the problem i am going to give you a problem for this so now what is we are going for what is called as bio pesticides so in last few slides you will be able to see how beautiful it is then tungro virus of the rice is another disease tungro virus of the rice the name of the plant is rice sativa tungro virus is then virus which is a causing it is um, spreading through the leaf hopper just like a grasshopper you have got a leaf hopper with the, uh, the word grasshopper you could have uh, heard many times even when you were a child you would have heard the word grasshopper mild intravenal chlorosis loss of chloro chlorophyll <coughs> mild mottling and yellowing appear first on emerging leaf symptoms appear on lower leaves that turn yellow orange bend downwards and possess a dark brown spots on the stunted parts the stunted means small it becomes a dwarf nature it's called stunted control measures <coughs> leaf hopper which transmits the tungro virus to another plant immediately after feeding an infected plant for a short time so if you can control the leaf hopper vector you should be able to control the disease see you can't kill the virus killing the virus is out of question so very it's, it's not at all possible so in this case what you can do you can see vector leaf hopper is carrying the virus so you can kill the leaf hopper because the leaf hopper is a very very big insect so by some measure if you can kill the vectors then you can kill the i mean see how we are i mean um, fighting with the malaria disease malaria is caused by the plasmodium it is a very small very very small insect you can but if you kill the mosquitoes you can spread the disease actually mosquito is only a vector it is only carrying the disease only spreading the disease it is not causing the disease which is causing the disease plasmodium is causing the disease mosquito is only a vector similarly here leaf hopper if you are able to kill you can kill the uh, uh, plant i mean uh, disease itself so that is how we are able to find i mean uh, um, manage the disease this is a leaf affected by the disease and this is the leaf hopper insect so if you are able to control the reproduction of the leaf hopper then the disease could be successfully controlled so see the, this is a life cycle is not a very much important this is a life cycle of the leaf hopper where how it is becoming a worm and then how it is developing a disease at what stage you can kill this insect i have shown here so a, a particular insect can be killed very successfully in in a particular stage for example mosquito also once it is becoming a mosquito you can't kill it it's very very difficult but while it is in the form of a worm you can kill it because by applying the oil by, by taking some sanitary measures that is why government is also telling how to kill the mosquitoes even while they are in the egg stage or in the larva stage okay so leaf hopper is controlled by the bio pesticides which are from living which are, which are a form of a living organisms then bio pesticides are of two types they are of the chemical origin and bio origin so i have mentioned many times that the chemical pesticides they are little bit dangerous to the health so you can go for the bio pesticides <laughs> methyl isocyanate is used to the manufacture of a serine a powerful pesticide that can kill more than 100 type of insects attacking 100 types of crops you see it's a cyanide it's a isocyanate and they, it is a very powerful pesticide which can kill 100 types of insects causing 100 type of crops but what is the safe for the human being that you should understand what is the safe for the human being who are consuming these fruits see now we have gone for what is known as a bio pesticides biological agents that are used for control of insects weeds and pathogens obtained from living organisms and microorganisms so when it is of the biological origin it becomes a very useful it it will be equal, having the equal potentiality to kill the insects and viruses but at the same time it is not that much injurious to our health <coughs> they are non hazardous non phytotoxic and they are selective in their or i mean action 
The most frequently used biocontrol agent is Bacillus thuringiensis and Pyrethrum from the inflorescence of a chrysanthemum of Astaceae. So they are giving rise to the biopesticides. Bacillus thuringiensis, it is becoming a very good, excellent biopesticide. This is a photography of a Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria, which is coming under the Bacillus type. <coughs> it is able to, Bacillus thuringiensis, we use it to the maximum extent today. So, next uh, word about the genetically modified food. What is a genetically modified food? When you are improving the quality of the crop by working at a genetic level, by changing the genes, then they become the GMF, genetically modified crops. Now, this GMF, genetically modified, once again, there is a lot of controversy over this. How safe these genetically modified crops are, only time has to tell that. Perhaps after a long period of 20 years or 25 years, these genetically modified crops or food may have some bad uh, thing on our health also. We don't know. These food have been made or by the scientists only very recently, about 5 years back. In a long run, in a, in a run of 30 or 35 years, what effect this will have on the human health? Only time has to decide. Certain things we, we, we can't tell now. See. These bacteria, they, are, they have been produced by means of a recombinant DNA technology and a tissue culture method. And these are, nowadays they are occupying the market today. Genetically modified crops, GMOs. GMOs of the, I mean, higher plants, GMOs are developed from the microorganisms. Nowadays, today's talk is only GMO, genetically improved crops. But as I told you, how safe these genetically improved crops are to us, only God knows. So, some of the examples are tomato, elevated sucrose and reduced starch. These are all the very good examples for the GMOs. So, this is the method by which a genetically modified crop could be produced. So, these are all some of the tomatoes. See, see a tomato which is being produced as a genetically modified crop. It will not have any disease. It will never get any disease. They are so beautiful. If you just see an apple, if you see a tomato, if you see any fruit by a genetically modified crop, no disease it, it can come and attack it. But how far safe it is for the human health? Oh, only time has to tell that. So you have got edible vaccines also. Edible vaccines which are actually coli and Vibrio cholerae. They produce uh, acute watery and uh, diarrhea by the Entrotoxins. Fine, we have come to the mostly end of this chapter. <clears throat> As I have told you, antibiotics also they are applied to the. This is a beautiful diagram of uh, the cro rice crop, which has been made by what is called as a, uh, our uh, scientist. They, they usually rice contains only carbohydrate they don't get you don't get much protein and vitamins that is why they say uh, uh, as far as possible avoid rice in your food they say because rice is a very poor in the protein and vitamins but our scientist indian scientists have developed a crop a rice variety which is containing a good amount of equal amount of protein and vitamins also just like a carbohydrate it contains a protein and vitamins also these are all coming under the modified or improved crops so these improved crops will be able to better serve our country so in this class to sum up i have been i was telling you what a disease is what a pathogen is how a pathogen will be causing a disease how the farmers should be aware of all these things if he has to really improve the crop he has to reduce the incidence of the diseases See, reducing the incidence of the disease is another method of improving the crop. Automatically, it will get improved. So, how to fight with the diseases? I, I was able to give you in a nutshell, in a beautiful way. So, if I got any doubt in this, if you want to more, if you want to know more about uh, more number of diseases about the plant, you can go for uh, I mean any book on pathology on agriculture, and then you can get more information about this. Particularly our food crops like a paddy, wheat, sugar cane. All these plants are getting their diseases. So, how to fight with these diseases? You can get the information from the suitable 
uh, media thank you very much thank you my dear children for listening to me thank you